Good evening. We are so excited for you to be here for the virtual ribbon cutting of Airmail, a powerful new tool for combating air pollution sources in Harris County. My name is Jennifer Hedaya, and I am the Executive Director of Air Alliance Houston. It is a true pleasure for me to welcome you to this event. I have met many of you since joining Air Alliance last November, and I look forward to meeting many more of you today and in our work together going forward. Can we go ahead and move to the next slide? When I joined Air Alliance Houston last year, I was briefed about a permit notification tool under development. One of our strategic priorities as an organization is to oppose pollution sources right in our backyards. To do this, we must know about permit applications and mobilize a response. Unfortunately, that essential first step, knowing about permit applications and their deadlines, is often a slow and difficult process. Today, our vision of a real-time accessible permit notification tool has become a reality, and it is available not only to our team, but to you and to the broader community as well. Next slide. Our webinar will cover four things today. Why airmail is important for combating air pollution in Harris County, the uniqueness of airmail and how it makes a complex process accessible, how to use airmail based on an important permit case happening right now, and what is in airmail's future and how it can be the most useful for you. Before we begin, I want to acknowledge those who have made airmail possible. First and foremost, our colleagues at January Advisors, and then our team here at Air Alliance Houston, in particular, Dr. Bakia Nelson, Corey Williams, Anthony D'Souza, and Rika Pojankowski, as well as our funders, many of whom are on the call with us today. You can learn more about our team and our supporters at our website, which is simply airalliancehouston.org. Now, we would like to learn a little bit about you. So Taylor, can we queue up our first audience poll? Right, the poll is out and I'll give you guys just a few moments to respond. All right, we'll close the poll in about 10 seconds. Right, and I'll be sharing the results now. A lot of research and community members. Mm -hmm. This is great. I think both of uh, those groups, the folks in those groups are going to be able to use airmail for quite a number of things. So we're excited that you're here today. Before I turn it over to our next speaker, I did want to mention that um, we are encouraging everyone on the webinar today to provide questions. Please use the Q&A uh, section of the menu bar at the bottom of your screen. We will be holding questions until the end, and we will ensure there is time to circle back to those questions as well. So it makes me truly proud to introduce our next speaker, Anthony D'Souza our research and policy coordinator and member of the airmail team who will tell you the story of airmail and why airmail matters. Hey everyone, I'm Anthony. Thank you for being here. Uh, as Jen said, I'm the research and policy coordinator at Airlines Houston. Air quality plays a vital role in determining people's health and quality of life. Exposure to air pollution is a significant and well-established risk factor for several both acute and chronic diseases, including cardiovascular disease, respiratory diseases like asthma, certain types of cancer, strokes, diabetes, and adverse mental health outcomes as well, all of which contribute to premature deaths. Vulnerable populations like children, the pregnant, elderly, and those with pre-existing conditions are even more at risk. In Houston specifically, air pollution is largely sourced from vehicular emissions and industrial releases. 
These industrial sources include um, petrochemical refineries, chemical manufacturing plants, uh, power plants, concrete batch plants, metal recyclers, and many, many more. The massive industrial and petrochemical presence in Houston, coupled with a lack of zoning, pretty much means that large polluters like the ones you see in these images can be permitted to operate a stone's throw away from residential areas, schools, churches, places of worship, and other sensitive land uses, putting people's health and safety at risk. More often than not, these sources of pollution disproportionately congregate in communities of color and lower income neighborhoods, which highlights that air pollution in Houston is also a very serious environmental justice issue as well. Next slide, please. So we at Airlines have tried to combat these trends through our Building Healthy Communities campaign, where we advocate with underserved communities who experience these disproportionate and cumulative impacts from multiple sources of air pollution. We organize campaigns raising awareness of these harmful sightings. We submit public comments to regulatory agencies to highlight these issues. And we also call for greater enforcement. Alongside this, we help increase public engagement in the permitting process by providing communities with resources to advocate for themselves. However, these campaigns are fundamentally dependent on awareness of when a facility applies for and is granted a permit by the TCEQ. Uh, and this requires diligent monitoring of active permits and public notices. Lack of this information or finding out too late essentially cripples community awareness and in turn, community engagement and opposition as well. In addition, TCEQ's already short public engagement window leaves us with characteristic timescales of about 15 days to a month from the time a public notice is issued to either submit comments, request a public meeting, or ask our elected officials to do so. These narrow public engagement windows combined with how complex it is to navigate the TCEQ's website and find out about new permits being issued essentially means that countless permits go by without anyone even knowing or let alone trying to get involved in the permitting process. Next slide, please. So to truly highlight Airmail's magnitude for change, I want to tell you a little bit about how we used to manage things before. So before Airmail, the process for identifying opportunities for new public participation campaigns, uh, identifying effective residents and communities, and then notifying them about a permit was very manual, very time consuming, and very labor intensive. And it required a lot of staff capacity. So each Friday, a staff member would manually scrape the TCQ pub notices that were issued for the week, and then they would enter the coordinates onto a map. And the following Monday, another staff member would review all of these notices, consider their locations and their type of industry, and then they do it an internal staff review. Um, and a decision would be made on whether further investigation and analysis was needed. If that were the case, um, we would then determine residential proximity on a case-by-case -case basis using GIS to draw a buffer on the facility. Then we'd use county appraisal district data and would identify the residential addresses that fell within that buffer. With that done, we could then create a mailing list, design postcards, and an assembly line of our staff would then print those postcards, affix labels and stamps onto them and drop them off at the post office. We'd also reach out to the relevant elected officials and community contacts and ask for the support in requesting a public meeting. Now, once all of these initial public notification steps were completed, our team then begins to prepare for the larger campaign to help organize communities to participate in the permitting process. Approximately 136 public notices related to air quality applications, permit applications were published in 2021 uh, for Harris County alone. And there were 171 the year before that. So on average, around three public notices are released each week. Um, with those stats in mind, it quickly became apparent that we needed to develop some way to both prioritize which permits um, we wanted to focus our attention on and also integrate some degree of automation to ease the time and labor constraints placed on our staff. And our airmail does all of that and more by allowing us to automate that initial notification and uh, identification process that you see um, in the boxes on the screen. So now what would normally take um, the better part of a week before for our staff now can be accomplished in about 15 minutes. And now that we have all of this time back, we hope to engage in these campaigns more frequently and also in more communities throughout the Houston area than we previously could. Next slide, please. Um, now the early direct mail campaigns that were the precursor to airmail were built on three core beliefs. The first is that all stakeholders to the environmental permitting and decision-making process benefit from the incorporation of democratic principles, such as transparent public participation and information sharing. 
The second belief is that the most effective and compelling environmental advocates are the residents and community members that are directly impacted by environmental injustice. And not only that, but they also deserve to have their concerns regarding impacts to their health, safety, and quality of life heard and addressed in a public forum by those most responsible for infringing on their health to a, on their right to a healthy environment. Now, the third core belief is that the current public participation process fails to adequately notify nearby residents of developments that may severely impact their health and quality of life. It is furthermore our belief that this lack of transparency is an intentional policy decision by the TCEQ made to favor industrial development over community concerns. And this failure essentially undermines the effective realization of the first two beliefs. Now, when we first implemented a direct mail campaign influenced by these beliefs, we sent out 270 postcards to warn residents in Acres homes about a concrete batch plant proposed to be developed in a park uh, across the street from a residential neighborhood. Over the course of three years and through the concerted efforts of many stakeholders, that permit was eventually withdrawn, as you see in the, the new story below there, and the facility was never developed. Since that initial direct mail effort, we have implemented three subsequent direct mail campaigns regarding concrete batch plants in residential neighborhoods throughout the Houston area. And all but one of those permits have been withdrawn and community stakeholders and advocates remain engaged in efforts to dissuade the remaining developer from building that last plan. We at Airlines recognized early on that concrete batch plants were not the only industrial development in the Houston area that could be affecting neighborhood air quality. There are also nine massive refineries, over 200 chemical processing or storage facilities called terminals, several urban landfills and countless other industrial facilities in Harris County. Furthermore, not only do, do all those facilities exist, but dozens of new facilities and expansions are expected in the Houston area over the next three years. However, until development of air mill, we really didn't have the capacity to address these other facility types that may potentially have even a more farther reaching impact than a concrete batch plant. By automating this process, we hope to expand the scope and successes of the early direct mill campaigns. And in doing so, we hope to address the continuous build out of fossil fuel infrastructure and also other air quality concerns that affect the Houston area. And we've been so fortunate to be able to work with January advisors on the development of this powerful and amazing tool, which really wouldn't exist without all of their hard work and commitment. So now I'll transition it over to Taylor from January advisors to tell you more about the tool itself and also provide you with a demo. Awesome. Thanks so much, Anthony. So howdy folks, my name is Taylor and I'm a consultant with January Advisors. I am joined today by my development colleagues, Emmy and Kelsey, who are on this panel with me. If you haven't heard of us, we're a data science consulting firm that specializes in public and nonprofit sector clients. We work on data science, web development and strategic projects. Uh, featured here is a glimpse of some of our work for Harris County Evictions Dashboard and the Texas Center for Justice and Equity Data Dashboards as well. If you're interested in learning more about the work that we do, we'll provide some contact information at the conclusion of the session um, and would love to get in touch with you. So we've been working with Air Alliance for about a year on building out the tool Airmail. And Air Alliance has been making Houston a healthier community for several decades, and Airmail will only further advance their mission and impact. We're thrilled to be here today and to show you more about the tool. Um, you've heard a bit about how it came to be from Anthony and Jen, and I'd love to tell you a bit more about its uniqueness. Specifically, what does the dashboard do? To answer the problem that Airmail is solving for, some background is important. As Anthony mentioned, in Texas, when facilities want to release pollutants, they need to release permits through the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, also known as TCEQ. This is the agency that enforces the Clean Air Act in Texas. By law, TCEQ posts new applications for air quality permits on its website and must publicize the permit by placing it in a local publication. The requirements for what is deemed a publication are loose. The size and breadth of this publication is not clarified, and therefore outreach to the public isn't necessarily achieved every time. In other words, the polluter permit information on TCEQ's website leaves much to be desired when it comes to being publicly accessible. Air Alliance has been doing incredible amounts of work to compensate for this massive polluter to public knowledge gap. 
Through their scrutinous and manual monitoring of polluters in the area, they've organized many community campaigns to help compensate for the missing or confusing information that's presented to the public about incoming polluters. It was through years of work that a solution to the information access issue was derived and airmail came to fruition. So when it comes to what the tool does, airmail's really meant to provide a full view of polluter information in one location, mobilize Air Alliance in the communities they serve, and ultimately create a more proactive response to air quality in the Gulf Coast region of Texas. There are three key functions of the tool that make it so transformative. And the first is that it centralizes information into one location. We've taken permit information from eight different sources and built them into one location via this tool. That means for you to get the same level of information from TCEQ's website that you get from Airmail, you would have to conduct research on eight or more different web pages to piece it together. And these are easy to read guides. It's a lot of technical jargon, excess information, and you can quickly get lost in the weeds. So through lots of reading, web scraping, and stakeholder discussions, we built a visual tool that concentrates all of the most important information about polluter permit notices into one easy to use system. By centralizing all of the information, the long process of manual research is taken out of the equation and makes knowledge more accessible to the public. The second function of Airmail is that it's meant to be a community engagement tool and create action. Before the tool existed, Air Alliance was doing that painful manual research in order to strategize for their campaigns. They recognized the need to be more effective in their efforts and that a centralized info system would help expand their community organizing goals and achievements. Not only does Airmail enable organizations like Air Alliance to move quicker and more intentionally in their community organizing, it also gives the general public the opportunity to take action independently. The tool provides clear guidance to community members on how to submit comments about incoming polluters, contact state legislators, and contribute to the organizing efforts of Air Alliance. These features make involvement in the process easier than it's ever been before. And lastly, Airmail was built as a proactive tool. It's different from other air quality tools out there. Airmail is the first tool to proactively present information to the public about incoming polluters, rather than just reporting on existing polluters or current air quality information. Websites like airnow.gov or IQ Air report quality levels in your area and provide helpful information on the contributors to those rankings. Whereas Airmail provides you information with, about the facilities before they even begin to pollute. These websites are super helpful for understanding current quality, but they provide little insight into what's actually causing the quality issues and how to prevent them from getting worse. Airmail is more proactive in that it engages the public in an early discussion and gives you all of the information you need to get into action. So now I'd love to set the stage for our demo. Before walking through the tool, we'll be referencing a use case as we go through it. Air Alliance Houston is running an active campaign regarding the Intercontinental Terminals in Deer Park, also known as ITC. The public action period is open through September 23rd, which is just around the corner. You can learn more information about the campaign on their website. However, if you're a longtime local to the area, you may already be aware of the Deer Park Terminal. In March of 2019, black smoke from the Deer Park petrochemical blaze came from this facility. Although there were no injuries, elevated benzene readings around the plant for shelter in place orders and school closures, while toxic runoff from the site closed a seven mile stretch of the Houston Ship Channel for three days. The Deer Park Terminal is an industrial facility with large tanks for storing oil, gas, and other petrochemical products. They're an air quality concern because of the byproducts produced by the materials in the facility and the severe impacts on the community when safety hazards arise, such as the 2019 fire. Right now, Air Alliance Houston is trying to organize enough community support to trigger a public meeting, and it's a great example of how you can get started with the tool today. As we explore more details about the facility, I'll provide you more information on how you can get into action on this campaign. Before we move forward, we'd love to hear from you, though, through another poll and learn about what neighborhoods you're in. So I'll give us about a minute to respond to that poll and set it up for us right now. All right.
poll I'll just give you guys a few more seconds. Still waiting on a few folks. Take your time. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll and share our results. All right, lots of Houston folks fully expected. This is awesome. Thank you so much for providing this information. All right, so from here, I'll move over to airmail so we can see more details about this facility. All right, so welcome to airmail. What you're looking at right now is a map of Harris County. The blue dots that you see on this map are active notices for when public action is still available. When public action is still open, it means that the TCEQ is still accepting public comments, legislators can be contacted to request a public hearing, or a public hearing may be up ahead and on the schedule. Gray dots represent facilities that no longer have open periods of public action. To better understand the tool, we're going to explore details about the ITC facility in Deer Park, and then we'll explore more about the user interface, key mechanics like filtering and sorting. So now we'll locate the Deer Park terminal. All right, so once we've located the Deer Park terminal and click on the pen, we'll notice that the right side of the menu bar changes and gives us specific, no, specific details about the Deer Park facility. In this view, we can see all of the related permit details. To make it as easy as possible to backsource to the original information, we've included hyperlinks to TCEQ's website pages about the permit. By clicking the View Notice PDF link, the TCEQ permit notice will be downloaded and you can open it in your desktop or browser. This allows you to read through the original permit notice and gain a full scope of the information that's coming from TCEQ. These first two hyperlinks, the view notice PDF and view entity are available for every facility profile and they will take you directly to the TCEQ notice and entity information. You can always check this out to get a full context of the permits info. Since the links are dense and have a lot of information, we've taken the most important details for you and made them easily digestible on the facility profile. Scrolling down further, you can view one of our advocacy specific tools. This sliding bar tool measures the radius of impacted homes as defined by Air Alliance and helps them in coordinating their community engagement campaigns. Just below that section is the section that will be most impactful for you. This is a list of available public actions you can take. For this facility, you'll have until September 23rd to submit a public comment to TCEQ and help in Air Alliance's efforts for calling a public hearing. By clicking the Submit Public Comment link, it directs you to the TCEQ public comment page and makes it simple for you to submit comments, questions, or even attachments to TCEQ. Every facility profile will take you to the direct page on TCEQ's website. As we see here, the permit number for this is 1061, which coordinates directly back with our Deer Park terminal profile. Air Alliance wanted to be sure that getting your voice in on the matter was as straightforward as possible. These comments are a really important part of the process for TCEQ's review. The more comments that are submitted, the more pressure that is applied to TCEQ to consider public feedback in their permitting decisions. However, the best way to call for action is to reach out to your state legislators. The TCEQ must organize a public meeting at the request of a local state legislator. You can find more resources at the bottom of this profile about your legislator's contact information. Air Alliance has also included really gate really great public engagement guides that provide you with templates that you can use for general comments or contacting your legislator. I have a few examples of these templates open here. These outlines are made so that you can be clear and concise in your outreach. We've also included 
the mailing and contact information for state legislators. So all of these representatives are easily accessible to you. Air Alliance wanted to make it that contacting your legislator could happen in a matter of minutes. The letters to legislators have the biggest impact on the next steps taken by TCEQ. So I highly recommend checking out the active campaigns happening through Air Alliance and using the map to explore more about your neighborhood. So now that you can better understand a specific use case for AirMail, I'll walk you through some details about the tool's interface and key features. As previously mentioned, the AirMail tool is gathering information from various pages across TCEQ's website and centralizing them into the single visual map. This map covers four counties, Harris County, Nueces, San Patricio, and Jefferson County. For filtering, we've built in several options on the right-hand side of the menu bar, menu bar that is available for all of the facilities on AirMail. We built out several options that can be used by the public and the very specific advocacy groups as well. For the public, you can filter between deadline passed and deadline not passed. As you can see, this is toggling between blue active pins and gray inactive ones. This is really useful to focus on permit notices that you can take action with as you're using the tool. Many of our other filters are built with advocacy groups like Air Alliance in mind and are intended to make it simple to locate the necessary permit notice information. These groups can filter by program area, which is the specific area that the polluter is related to. So for example, a petrochemical plant that's exposing carcinogenic byproducts into the air would be found under air quality whereas a permit for stormwater drainage would be filtered by water quality. This corresponds to the specific program areas laid out by TCEQ. We've also pulled together industry type codes presented by TCEQ and applied business rules provided by Air Alliance to group these type codes into major categories that are important to make filtering easier for advocacy groups. Air Alliance has also put tremendous amounts of work into evaluating the relevant details for all of their advocacy users. Another filtering feature exists down here for permit number, RN, and industry type codes. NAICS and SIC codes are facility industry type codes, and they give advocacy users the ability to search for specific facilities with any piece of any level of detail that they have available. They can also search by notice type and public action type. These help groups define their campaigns and narrow in on what actions are available for their notices. So now I'll move forward to our sorting options. So for our sorting feature, you can organize the order in which you wanna see the permit notice information on the map, as well as the right-hand menu bar. You can search by public action issue date in descending order, which shows you permits that are active with the longest period of public engagement time. As we can see here, the longest period of action is 26 days for the Port Arthur refinery. And as we scroll down, that public action period begins to dwindle one to three days. This is a great sorting feature for a user who wants to act on newly issued notices. On the flip side, you can also search by public action date ascending. And this shows you permit notices in orders of shortest to longest period of public action time. Due to our blank filtering options, this also includes public action dates that have passed, but we can adjust our filter to just show active facilities and see that it will narrow down the shortest timeframes to what is available for you to get into action on today. The other sorting features are issuance dates and sorting by a number of impacted residences to a facility. These are of use for advocacy organizations and help these groups go to where the greatest number of people live and where they can make the greatest impact. You can also customize the date range. You can view the permit notices as far back as a year. And this is great if you'd like to build a historical picture of what's been happening in your neighborhood. The date range uses issue date of the permit notice as the key reference date. And finally, we have a basic search function. This allows you to use a facility name or a specific type, anything you can really plug it in here and use any level of detail that you have available. 
So now that we've walked through airmail's function and mechanics, I'd love to walk, walk you through the future potential that we and Air Alliance see for the tool. So just a moment to pop back into my presentation. So with the new level of information access that Airmail brings, we expect this to be a helpful tool for many different types of people. Our project started off with environmental organizers in mind and grew into a public tool. We've already started to work with Air Alliance on how this can be used by other key community members, as well as other pathways that the tool can take in its expansion. The first group that we're looking to bring to the table is, meet, is other environmental groups. As mentioned previously, we cover more program areas in Airmail than just air quality. Airmail is prioritized for air quality, but we can absolutely see expansions of this tool that enables other organizations with priorities in water quality and solid waste to get into community action as well. In addition to bringing other community organizing groups to the table, we can foresee this being an advantageous tool for people with a public platform as well, such as media and journalists. Bringing journalists and other publications to the table will help us spread awareness about polluters and notify the public of the tool. Curating the tool for this user group would allow us built-in awareness of the tool through additional media citation. It would encourage public use and help us gather feedback for future development and expansion of the tool. And it helps drive immediate awareness of permitting activities within the Gulf Coast region. Another user base we foresee are public officials. As we've stated, it's the actions demanded by state legislators of the TCEQ that drive the most community engagement. We hope to expand the tool to better serve public officials and in their policy impacts. Curating the tool for this group would enable us to alert public officials about permitting activity. We would like to help them provide links to share with their constituents give them a better understanding of the true volume of activity in their own district and provide additional advocacy opportunities as well. Today, Airmail is a major tool for advocates. Anthony touched on these features earlier, but with the tool, airline staff can now get weekly emails and a summary on new permits, and these users can also download address lists of impacted residences and utilize mailing materials auto-filled with information about the facility and public actions, which brings them into engagement immediately. In considering the next stage of airmail, we want to expand features like this for advocates and to the general public. The goal of creating and adding new features is to make airmail more expansive, customizable, innovative, and publicly accessible. So with that in mind, I'm gonna open up our final poll because um, we'd love to hear from you of how you could see yourself using this tool. And we'll get that launched right now and I'll give you guys a few seconds to respond. All right, I'll give folks about 10 more seconds. Okay, awesome. I'll close the poll and share our results now. This is great feedback to have. Um, so as a research source was our number one answer. We're really excited to take this response back to the table and come up with some new ideas for you guys. So thanks so much. So thinking back to how this is the first proactive tool in regards to air quality, we see so many options for future development that will continue to support Air Alliance in building a healthier and safer community. And with that, I'd like to say thank you all so much for joining us today in reviewing Airmail. It's the continued work and passion of the staff at Airlines that has made such a thing possible. And we're so grateful to be a part of the network and had the chance to work on this. 
It's been a great pleasure to work with the team here, and we're super excited about the continued growth of the tool. And at this time, we'll be opening it up to some questions and answers. So feel free to drop, drop things into the Q&A if you haven't already. Um, and I'd like to say thank you again. Um, at this time, I'll review the Q&As that we already have submitted, and uh, we'll go, go in on answering some questions for you guys.